Good morning. Wait just a moment. Uh, let everyone get signed on this morning. Hope y'all had a great week. Hope you're having a beautiful Sunday morning. It's a beautiful day here uh, in North Carolina. Let us know where you're watching from. Uh, love to see all the different places we're reaching. And uh, tag a friend, share this. I believe this is a subject that um, many people can relate to. Uh, I want to talk about prayer today. Uh, it's something that we all need to be doing in the days we live in, but sometimes we wonder, you know, what's the use? Why should I even pray? It seems like when we pray, things don't change. Sometimes it seems like we pray and things get worse sometimes. So it's just, a, I think this is something we all can relate to. So again, please let me know where you're watching from. Um, share this video, tag a friend. I want you to know why we're waiting for others to sign on. I see some people coming on now. It's good to see y'all. Good morning. Um, Thank you for the donations. The donations we've received, we've been receiving quite a quite a few donations over the last few months. So we have an event planned um, October the 10th in Davis, North Carolina. It's near Moorhead City. It's going to be called the Down East Awakening. And so, uh, because of your generous donations, we're able to, to do this with not with no impact on the churches financially. We go completely, not asking anyone for any anything. We're going to give. We're going to bless that community. We want to bless the churches. We want to help. We want to bless with the Word of God. So thank you for your donations. They will be used for the glory of God to spread the gospel. Again, we're going to be talking this morning uh, briefly about prayer and, and why should I pray? What's the use? Um, if you've had a week like I've had this week, uh, you can relate. You know, a lot of times we get on here and we do videos and we, we I think sometimes we, we just need to be real transparent with what's going on in our lives because there's people that can relate to it. I get a lot of messages from around the country, a lot of different people are going through. You would be shocked at the, the things that people go through that someone in another state is almost identical. You know, everybody's going through pretty much all kind of th different things, but there's a lot of similarities. And uh, we, we get to places sometimes in our lives where we, we, we think, God, what, what are you doing? What is the use? I mean, why should I keep even trying? And so... I want to take the Word of God and help you today. It's helped me. This message really was given to me this morning because um, I haven't prayed this week. I haven't read my Bible this week. I didn't want to. I didn't want to pray. didn't want to read my Bible. I, I, I didn't feel like it. Okay? I, I get like that too. I get I get frustrated. I get upset. I get I get angry with God. I say, Lord, what, what, are, what are you doing? And so... Like anybody else or any other child, I guess I pout sometimes. But you know, it's funny. God will set you down. And because uh, I weren't coming out here, I was not coming to do a video today. I said, I'm not just not coming. This has been a one of them weeks. And the Lord, I sat down with the Bible as I'm saying, Lord, I'm not going. I sat down with the Bible. And He just starts giving me scripture to help me and, and to encourage me. And it was my sorry attitude, my bad attitude. He still is encouraging me and helping me. And I hope this encourages and helps you today. So I want to share this with you. Out of, out of the Word of God, I want just one scripture, Jeremiah 33, 3. We're talking about prayer. Why? Why should I pray? What's the use? Jeremiah 33, 3. A lot of people quote it. A lot of preachers write it on a little note they sign or in people's Bibles. But let's talk about it. The Word of God says in Jeremiah 33, 3, God says, Call unto me, and I will answer thee, and I will show you great and mighty things thou knowest not. Now, he says, Call unto me. He didn't say, Try to figure it out on your own. He didn't say, Look to a politician. He didn't say, Try to do it in your own strength. He says, Call unto me. And if we call unto him, we need to know who we're talking to. We need to know who we're calling and I call him Father because I've been born again. And if you're a child of God, when you call, call unto him, he's your daddy. He's your father. The Bible says we call him Abba Father, my daddy. And when, I, and when God was giving me this, I guess because I'm, I'm, I'm rebellious, I, I, when, I, when I go through things, I tend to not want to pray, not want to seek his face. I, most, more, I, I kind of just want to pull away. And there was another in the Word of God that called his daddy Father. They did exactly the same thing in a spiritual context. The Lord showed me this this morning. Pretty much, David, this is you. In Luke, the 15th chapter, we know it's the prodigal son. He, he got upset. Well, excuse me. 
he, he, he wanted all this stuff. He just wanted to go. He wanted to go out in the community. He wanted to go out in the town, said he wanted to live it up. The father gave him everything he could possibly want. He asked for it, and he went. And we all know the story. We all know how he found himself feeding the hogs, and he was out. He was lost, and he, all his friends were gone, and he had spent everything he had. He had nothing. But there's a scripture that the Lord showed me in here that I think really applies to us today. And it says once he was in that hog pen, he was, he was thinking, he was reflecting on how he got where he was at and what was happening in his life. And he says, I will arise and go to my father and will say unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before thee. Now what he said, he said, I will arise and go to my father. I'm going to call on my father. Where we're at in our country, with, the, with the, the craziness that's going on and the things in our own lives and the personal things that are happening in people's lives, the greatest thing we can do is call on our Father. Call unto Him. And He says, if you do that, if you call unto me, I'll show you something. Call unto me. That prodigal son says, I will arise. The Bible says, and these are the scriptures God gave me this morning to help me, and I got them here, I want to help you. He says, draw nigh unto God and he will draw nigh unto you. When you call out to your father, you're saying, Father, I need you right where I'm at. I don't see you. You're not, you don't seem to care. You don't seem to be around. But you know what? I know that's not the truth because your word says you have an everlasting love for me. Your love says that you'll never leave me. You'll never forsake me. Your word says that you're the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. That means because I change, because I leave, because I get upset, you don't. You don't change. My attitude doesn't bother you. My attitude doesn't make you change. You're still God. He says, cleanse your hands, you sinner. Purify your hearts, you double-minded. That convicted me because a lot of times when we're upset and we don't see things going the way we want it to go, we're double-minded. We say, hey, why don't I just go back, man? Why don't I go back to being what I used to be? And some of y'all, there's some super religious people, oh, bless God, I've never been so happy and so joyful since I've been saved. Well, you know what? Thank God for you. But I haven't. I've been through some, some stuff. And, 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 and I was probably, on a worldly scale, happier before I was saved. Because I was oblivious to spiritual warfare. I was living for the devil. And so nothing come against me. And I'm just being real with you. I, I'm just going to be honest. But I didn't have true joy. There's a difference between happiness and joy. Happiness are things that you have to have to make you feel good, to make you happy. Worldly things, materialism, relationships, all kind of different things give you happiness. But joy comes from the Lord. Joy is a peace beyond all, beyond all understanding. Joy is when all hell's breaking loose in your life. Maybe your children or your family's falling apart or, or financial problems or health problems. Joy says no. That doesn't determine my love for you. I'm your God in the valley. I'm your God on the mountain. I'm your God passing through. I'm your God passing out. I'm your God wherever you're at. I'm the Lord thy God, and I'm your joy. I'm your peace. And he's, his presence is ever near. And that's why he says, draw nigh to me. Draw nigh to me. Don't, don't run from me. Draw nigh to me. The Bible says, the Lord is nigh unto them that are of a broken heart, and save it such that be of a contrite spirit. That means when you're broken hearted and you're down in the dumps, or you're under great conviction for something you've done, you fail, you've fallen away, just like the prodigal son. He, he, he wasted his life. He wasted everything. He was an embarrassment to his family. He was an embarrassment to the father, as far as we're concerned. But when I, my Bible says that when he turned to go back to the father, the father was already staring at him, looking at him. He didn't embarrass the father. He didn't make his father regret that he was his son. His father was watching for him to turn because he knew one day, one day, he's going to turn back to me, and when he does, Satan's going to say, no, you've gone too far, you can't come back, you've done too much, you're not good enough, you're not worthy. The Father knows the devil, and he knows the devil's actions, and he knows his cunning ways. And so he was looking for the Son to turn back to him, and when he saw that, the devil went open his mouth. I like to think that he just slapped the devil right upside the head and pushed him out of the way and said, shut up, son, I see you. I'm waiting for you. I love you. As a matter of fact, I'm running to you, and I'm going to hug your neck. You don't even have to. I'm not going to stand here and wait for you. I'm going to run to you. That's the Father we serve. That's the God we, we have. That's the Lord God above. That's the one that loves us and gave himself for us. 
He says, come boldly. He says, many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord, listen to this now, the Lord deliver him of them all. Deli he, many problems. That, that goes back to what I said. I've, all hell has broke loose in my life since I've been a preacher. All hell's broke loose in my life since I've been a Christian. Many are the afflictions of the righteous. You say, well, I don't understand why people live like hell and everything's great in their life. I don't understand why they can be a drunk or that one there can just be a womanizer or, or, or she can do this or he can do that. Why, God? Why do I have to go through persecution? Because he says, many are the afflictions of the righteous, not the sinner, but the righteous. Why is that? Because God is working something in us greater than we know. He's strengthening our faith. He's building up something in us. He's strengthening our inner man, our spirit. And He's causing our faith to grow and, and to just come forth. And when it comes forth, we're going to shine in this world. You're going to shine because what you went through, the persecution, the tribulation, the despair, the anxiety, the depression, the worry, all that stuff won't mean a hill of beans when you step out on the other side purified by the Spirit of the living God who strengthened your faith and you'll stand and you'll, you'll look back to the right, you'll look back to the left and you'll look and see the problems laying here, problems laying there because you walk through them by the power of God and you're standing up with more faith, more strength, more security in who you are, ready to face the world. See, it's never been about settling and holding to what we got. That's the problem with the church today. That's what's wrong with the church today. We want to hold on to what we got. Oh, bless God, let's keep the building. Let's get in the building. we got to have another program. we got to get more people coming in. Oh, look at our great facility we built. It don't mean nothing to God. What God's concerned about is your soul, their soul, your spiritual well-being, the fruit of your soul, the fruit of the Spirit. That's what God is wanting. And so because He knows we're lazy and we're, we're creatures of habit, that we're not going to progress unless He lets affliction and persecution and trials and tribulation come. They're going to come by your family. They're going to come through your children. They're going to come through financial problems. They're going to come through health problems. We're all going to face persecution and tribulation. But he says, the Lord, <clears throat> the Lord, deliver him of them all. Every one of them. Call unto me. Call unto me, and I will answer thee, and show thee great and mighty things. Thou knowest not. Now when he says call unto me, he's saying, hey, come on, come boldly. The Bible says, for we have not a high priest, hallelujah, talking about Jesus. We have not a high priest which cannot be touched with the feelings of our infirmities, but was in all points, all points, tempted as we are yet without sin. That means Christ experienced exactly what I've experienced this week. There was a time in Jesus' life when he didn't want to pray. There was a time when he didn't want to think about the things of God. And you say, oh my God, I can't believe you you're blaspheme. Let me tell you something. The Word of God says he was tempted in all points just like I was. That means he was tempted. That didn't mean he did it. That didn't mean he failed like I do because I'm a, I'm a failure. I fail all the time. But my God was perfect. Christ walked this earth a perfect man, holy. But he was tempted just like we are. The same junk that you deal with, the same problems that we have, he was tempted by every one of them. If it's not true, this word's a liar. He just said it. He said in all points, he was tempted like we are. That means whatever you're facing today, whatever your problem is today, don't, don't feel like you're special. Don't feel like you're isolated. Don't feel like you're alone. Christ went through it 2,000 years ago. You say, well, I don't know. I don't read it in the Bible. Let me read it again. Let me read it one more time. For we have not a high priest which cannot be touched with the feelings of our infirmities. He has felt it. He knew what you felt. He knew what, how, what you were going through. But was in all points. All means all. All points. Tempted like as we are, yet without sin. And then it says, Let us therefore boldly, come boldly to the throne of grace, that we may obtain mercy and find grace at times and help in need. You know what that means to me? That means that when I didn't pray this week, I didn't read my Bible, I was upset with God, that means when I mess up and do something stupid and fall off the wagon or whatever you want to call it and just sin, when that happens, that means I don't have to hide. Hallelujah. I don't have to hide and say, oh, 
I hope he'll forgive me. I don't have to go crawl up in a bush somewhere and say, God, I don't even want nobody to, I don't even want you to have to look upon me. No, that means he says, come boldly. Come boldly. Come to me. I know you're going to fall. His word says a just man falls seven times and rises again. He knows we're going down. He knows we can't make it. He knows there's nothing I can do of myself in my own flesh. But by the spirit of the living God, I can overcome this world because he says greater is he that's in me than he that's in this world. The Holy Spirit of God will lead, direct, convict when I need convicting. He will establish my feet. He'll set my feet on the solid rock. He'll give me power to face a circumstance and a power to overcome. But I have to believe. I have to put my faith in Him. I've got to call out to Him. He says, call unto me. And I will answer you. The Bible says, casting all your care upon Him. For He careth for you. Now why would God say, call unto me? If He didn't care to hear what you got to say. I, my God, the devil's such a, a liar. He'll tell you, God doesn't want to hear from you. Oh, you can't preach. You don't need to, well, I know I can't preach oratorically I know I'm not a great speaker that's beside the point devil what he's really telling me is look I'm going to give you something here you're not good enough you're not holy enough you're not set apart enough you think a holy God wants you to speak on his behalf that's the kind of junk I listen to that's the kind of stuff I got to hear and then there's always people that will come in and, and help the devil out when it comes to that I'm sure y'all all know the type but here's the deal God knows that. God knew that when he died for me. God knew that before the world was formed. God knew me before he formed this world and he called me anyway. Because he knew, he knew that besides all my faults, all my problems, all my imperfections, that I would be saved and that he would live within me and that he just, you know what, You're just going to have to live with it, devil. He loves me. God loves me with an everlasting love. God loves me more than I love him. God loves me more than I love my child, God, my children. God loves me more than I love my wife. God loves me. And there's nothing I can do to make him not love me. There's nothing I can say that would offend him to where he won't love me anymore. There's, there's no amount of upset railing or arguing or even shouting, shaking your fist, whatever at God that will make him stop loving you. Do you understand that? We don't understand that. We, we can't comprehend the love of God. We, we, back, we, we love because we're loved. We love those that love us back. We don't, we don't give love freely when we're not recipro it's not reciprocated. After a while, we start, we turn that love turns into hate and bitterness and anger, but God just loves. He loves when we're, when we're mean. He loves when we don't treat him right. He loves when we, when we ignore him. He loves us when we, when we sin against him. He loves us with an everlasting love. It's a love that we can't understand. It's a love that human beings cannot actually give to each other. That's why he says the love of God is shed in our heart by the Holy Spirit of God. The love that we have for brothers and sisters in Christ is a supernatural love. It's a, it's a God love. It's a love that God gives us when we're born again. And I thank God for His love. I thank God that His love is not dependent on me. I thank that His love is not because I'm good enough. I thank God that His love is because He's good and because He doesn't change and He's not going to change His mind about me. He's not going to decide I, I don't love you anymore. He's not going to cast me out. He's not going to kick me off. He says, you're seated in heavenly places. When I saved you, David, I saved you. I sealed you with my spirit. Let me tell you something. Those of y'all, and I say this, Lord, help me. I say this with humility and meekness, and I say this with love. If you live believing you can lose your salvation, you live a miserable life, and you miss the whole point of God's love, you cannot lose your salvation. Why? Because he's the author and finisher of your faith. You're saved by faith. He gave you the salvation. When you received it, it was a gift from God. He doesn't snatch it back because you ain't good enough. He already knows you ain't good enough because that's why he had to come and die on a cross for you. There's power in that. There's strength in that. There's security in that. And regardless of what people say, there's the willingness and the desire to live a holy life when you realize that. More so than when you feel like everything depends on you. Because let me tell you something, y'all. If my salvation depended on me, it's been gone a long time ago.
long time ago. I've quit more times. I don't even know how many times. Beverly's here. Can I get an amen? amen? Amen. I've quit a bunch of times. Why? Because I'm a human being. I, I, you know, I get fed up. Y'all know how hard it is to, to, to preach and, 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 and <laughs> when, you, when you're not the kind of person that like, you like to fire back, can I, let me just say, you're the kind of person you like to give it back. You don't want somebody to slap you. and you, I don't turn the other cheek. I'm sorry. I need to. The Bible says I should, but I'm just not that guy. I wish I was. I wish I was more meek. And it's hard sometimes to turn the other cheek. It hurts to look the other way and say, yeah, I'd like to tell that person what I think. They told me what they think. Now let me tell them what, that, what I But you know what? That's the devil. It's the devil stirring my flesh. It's the devil trying to get me to say and do something to hurt my ministry. He's worked this week to try to destroy my ministry. Not not from without, but from within. He wants to stir me up enough that I, that I do something to destroy my ministry. That's, that's what his whole objective is in our lives. He's come to steal, kill, and destroy. And every day I've been praying for the last month, Lord, help me to die to self today. Because yesterday I didn't. Tomorrow I probably won't. Today, help me to die to myself, Lord. Why? Because I can't make it on my own. I can't do it. I need you. Call unto me, and I will answer thee and show thee great and mighty things thou knowest not. Answer me. He says, if you, being evil, know how to give good gifts unto your children, how much more, how much more shall your Father which is in heaven give good things to them that ask him? How much more? This is scripture he gave me on the couch this morning. How much more, David? How, you, you give your children everything you can. You love your children. You would die for your children. How much more will your Father in heaven do for you? That's powerful. That's a powerful scripture. David understood this. As the Lord took me here, David understood this. He says, in my distress, I called upon the Lord and cried unto my God. He heard my voice out of his temple, and my cry came before him even unto his ears. God hears our prayers. Call unto me. Call unto me, and I will answer thee. Then the earth shook. Check this out. Then the earth shook and trembled. Why? Because David called unto his God. Because I called to God this morning. The earth shook and trembled. And the foundations also of the hills moved and were shaken. Because he was wroth. God was upset. He's seen what was going on in my life. He understands what's happening. And he's waiting for his child to call. Because when his child, let me tell you something. You mess with my kids, you mess with my kids, you'll see some stuff. And I'm sure I love, hey, all you loving parents out there feel the same way. God is no different. God's not an it. He's not a thing. He's not some being with no feelings. He's got feelings. He loves us. He can have his feelings hurt. He can, he can, he, he, he experiences things. He's jealous of us. He loves us. And when someone comes against his child or your heart, God is wroth. God is mad. God is upset. But it's a holy anger, a righteous anger. And make no mistake about it. He loves that person that's hurt you, that's maybe a sinner, just as much, just as much as he loves me or you to save. The, the prayers of a saint are a powerful thing. The prayers of a righteous man availeth much. And David says, when I prayed, the foundation shook. God was wrong, mad, upset. There went up a smoke out of his nostrils and fire out of his mouth. Devoured coals were kindled by it. He bowed. I love this. He bowed the heavens also. God bent the heavens. I'm coming down there and I'm going to straighten it out. How many people out there today, can I get an amen, want to see this country straightened out? Want to see the stupidity of people just to wake up and see what how they're being deceived and divided by media and by secret agendas and trying to just destroy each other. How many out there can I get an amen that says, I want God to move. I want to see God move in America and show these people who he is. I want God to bow to heavens and come down and on, on this whole world and say, this is my world. I've come because the prayers of my children have come up to my ears. I've heard them on high and I've heard them and now I'm going to shake the foundations of the world. I'm going to bow to heavens. I'm going to come down to this place and fire and smoke comes out of my nostrils when I look at all the ones that are trying to destroy what I have said is righteous. Hallelujah. 
and he rode upon a cherub and did fly. Yea, he did fly upon the wings of the wind. He made darkness, secret place. You in a dark place today? You in a bad, dark place? God says, no, I'll make that my secret place. That ain't nothing. Darkness, don't, darkness doesn't scare God. He sees through darkness. He dwells. <clears throat> he dwells in the thick darkness. Where the worst of the worst, the least of the least, the most wickedest is, is where the presence of God is dwelling in that darkness. Why? Because he wants their soul to be saved. He wants them to come out of that darkness into the marvelous light. While some self-righteous super, super Christian is worried about the church and what they can get inside of the building, God is concerned with the homeless, the addict, the, the vagrant, the one nobody wants to be around. God is where the dark alleys are. God's in the crack houses where they're making meth. God's where the ones that need Him are, the ones that are needing hope. He's not there for the ones that are not calling out to Him. He's not there in the church because they're doing their worship and praise and they could care less if God's in it. He's there with those that are on the bottom of the barrel, in the gutter, saying, Oh God, help me come out of this place. Save me, Lord. Deliver me from evil and wickedness. Help me to get rid of this addiction and these habits in my life. Help me, God, if you're real. If you're real. Help me, Lord. Call unto me, and I will answer thee and show thee great and mighty things thou knowest not. He delivered me from the strong enemy and from them which hated me. For they were too strong for me. I can't do it, Lord. I can't break free from drugs. I can't break free from the desire of alcohol. I can't break free from the habit, the sin, whatever it is in your life. That's your enemy. David said, they're too strong for me. God done not bowed the heavens. He done not shook the earth. He's on the wings of cherubs. He's coming. <laughs> Good Lord. They prevented me in the day of my calamity, but the Lord was my stay. Hallelujah. He brought me forth also into a large place. He delivered me because he delighted in me. God delights in me. He delights in me. You know, I, I know a lot of people don't, but God does. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, that you delight in me. And thank you that you teach me to delight in you and your ways. David said, I waited patiently on the Lord, and he inclined an ear unto me. He heard my cry. He heard my cry. Call unto me, and I will answer thee. He brought me up also out of a horrible pit, out of a miry clay, and he set my feet upon a rock and established my goings. He hath put a new song in my mouth, even praise unto God. Many shall see it and fear and shall trust in the Lord. Now what does that mean? He put a new song in David's mouth. David was going around, they're about to kill me. They're trying to destroy me. What am I going to do? Me, 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 me. And then all of a sudden God shows up. He bows to heaven. He, he shakes the foundation. He delivers David. And David's got a new song. Thus saith the Lord, my God, he receives all glory and praise. Glory to the Lamb of God that takes away the sin of the world. Glory to God that opens doors no man can open and closes doors no man can close. Glory to God that has set this earth in motion and no man can change anything he does. Glory to God who knows the very numbers of hairs on my head. That's the new song. I don't face nothing that God ain't already faced for me. He just let me fight. You know, I love that because I'm a fighter. I'm a fighter. That, that's, 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 that's a lot of the problem I have, y'all. Because fighters are egotistical, they're prideful. You can't get in a ring when I used to fight and believe that you're going to get beat or you're beat. So you naturally got to be full of yourself, okay? Believe that you can do it. Well, guess what? That just don't go away when you turn 48. That, that's still there. So I fight with that all the time. I battle that, that ego, that pride. And the devil knows how to push them buttons. But God's saying, it's all right. I know who you are. I made you the way you are. But God, I'm no Billy Graham. Well, Billy Graham wouldn't have gotten a ring and kickbox nobody. Bam! Everybody is different. Everybody is called a different way. I'm not going to try to beat him, and he can't be me. I can't be you. You can't be me. We have to operate with who we are in God. That doesn't mean we're perfect. That doesn't mean our flaws, God wants us to keep them. He wants us to, to try to sanctify ourselves through the Word of God and by the by the unction of the Holy Ghost. But the fact is, I'm a fighter by nature. That's who I am, a warrior. 
He says, you know what? You're a warrior for me. I'm going to give you I'm going to give you the ability to war for me in the spirit. You're going to face some things. It's not always going to be you're in there slinging and knocking demons down and fighting. Sometimes you're going to get your butt kicked. Sometimes you're going to end up on your back. Sometimes I'm going to allow it. But make no mistake about it. The battle is already won because he fights the battles. He won the victory. All I have to do is stand. I don't know what somebody's facing today. Maybe it's at the job. you got people against you. you got people trying to hurt you on your job. There's people trying to stab you in the back. The battle is the Lord's. If you're a child of God, fight the spiritual battle. Man, this is hard. This is some hard stuff. But if you'll get down on your knees and pray and say, Lord, help me to see my imperfections before I see theirs. God, I can tell you what's wrong with them and, and let him know like he don't know. Tell him everything like I did this morning. Let, let me tell you, Lord, this is it's hard. This is what's wrong with them. But then you do this. Say, Lord, okay, help me see my, my faults the way you do. Help me see my imperfections before I see theirs. And guess what? If he, if he does that, if he allows that, you won't be so cocky. You won't be so full of yourself. Because you'll see that you have wronged him way more than anybody's ever wronged you. That's why Jesus says, you, to be forgiven, we have to forgive. Who are we to hold a grudge? Man, let me tell you something. I, I can hold a grudge. Y'all don't, y'all just don't understand. Y'all don't know me. I'm telling you. I can get mad, and I'm telling you. Christian people are the worst ones. Pastors and self-righteous people. They're the worst ones. They're, they, sometimes, it, help me, Lord. The bottom line is this. God sees me, what I do to him is a lot worse than what anybody's done to me. And I need help there. I need him to help me with that. Because I can say it. I hear it come, a lot of it comes out of my mouth. I, I don't, it's coming from God. But up here I'm thinking, as it's coming out of my mouth, I'm thinking, I can't do that. I'd rather kick their tail. I, Lord, I, don't, I can't love them. God's saying, you can't. You can't love them. But through me, you can. You've got to yield yourself. And if you don't, David Pate, if you don't humble yourself, I'll humble you. I don't want him to do it. I don't want God to do that. I want to do it if I can. He says, let him to ask. Ask not wavering. Don't, don't, don't ask him if you don't believe it. If you don't believe it, don't ask him. Oh, I hope that this virus goes away. Lord, I, you know what? You're wasting your breath if you don't even believe what you're saying. There's people today, I, and I, I'm going to make you all mad right now. It disgusts me. It makes me sick. And this is me in the flesh, probably. We got to wear a mask and we got to stay out of our churches because the governor decreed it. You know, I remember when some leader governor decreed back in Daniel to fall down and bow to an idol and worship an idol. And if you didn't fall down and bow, guess what? You'd be killed. You'd be burned up. The mayor, the town commissioners, the governor, the senate, all of them in that country called Babylon bowed to the golden image that Nebuchadnezzar set up because he decreed it. God has told us in his word that in the last days there'll be great tribulation. There'll be persecution. American Christians don't want no persecution. Can't take no persecution. And ain't willing to get involved in persecution if they can help it. But look, guess what? It's coming to your door. It's coming to you. Where's the faith? Where's the strength? Where's the faith that the Christian body of Christ is showing? The body of Christ is not showing it. We're showing, in my opinion, an extreme lack of faith. And I'm going to leave it right there. Because I, that, who am I? Who am I to say anything? Let no man think he shall receive anything of the Lord. A double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. That means if you're asking for anything and you don't believe it, you're double-minded. And, and you, you shouldn't even expect God to answer that. God wants us to believe. That's why he says, call unto me. Call unto me. Believe you're talking to the Lord God, and I will hear thee. Jesus told us. Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And whosoever liveth and believeth, believeth in me, shall never die. And then he throws this in for good measure.
believeth thou this? Believeth thou this? Do you believe? Do you really believe? You know, the disciples, apostles, all they believed to death. They believed, if it takes my life, I'm still going to heaven. I'll leave that right where it's at. They believed with action, not lip service. Call unto me, and I will answer thee and show thee great and mighty things thou knowest not. Great and mighty things. The Bible says, look unto me. God says, look unto me. Look at me. Not the pandemic. Not the problems of this country. Look at me. And be ye saved all the ends of the earth, for I am God, and there is none else. There's nobody like him. There's not one individual like him on this planet. He's God, and there is none else. The Bible says, Now to him that is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that we ask or think. He can do more than we can ask for and more than we can even think of. The power of prayer is before us. The power of prayer is the lethal, uh, most lethal weapon for a Christian and our unbelief, our double-mindedness, our doubting God and calling out for politicians or somebody else to help us with our problems is telling God, hey, I hear you, I read your word, but you can't handle this situation. I need somebody I can see face to face. He says, call unto me. Call unto me. And I will answer thee and show thee great and mighty things thou knowest not. Able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that we ask us think, think according to, listen to this, according to the power that worketh in us. Oh, man. Hold on now. You call in up to God. You call to God and say, God, I need you to do this. You can do exceedingly abundantly more than anything. And God says, yeah, according to the power that's in you that I put in you. According to the power. What is the power? The Holy Ghost of God, okay? The Spirit of the living God is the power of the church. It's the birth, He's the birth of the church. He's, he's everything on this planet. He is the one that lifts up a standard against the enemy. He's the one that gives the anointing to preach, to witness, to stand. How much of that power is in you? How much do you have? Are you full of the Spirit of God or are you full of something else? Think about it now. Because it's a personal thing. I'm not, I, I don't know you. You don't know me. And to Him be the glory of the church by Christ Jesus throughout all ages, world without end. Amen. God deserves the glory and the praise. And he's the only one that deserves it. In this world, we look around. I see the trees. Y'all can't see the wind blowing probably through the trees. The wind's blowing, sun, beautiful sky. The Bible says, the last scripture he gave me this morning, the heavens declare the glory of God. And the firmament showeth his handiwork. How amazing is it that we walk around in this life looking at the beauty, nature, sights to see, beautiful things in the world with no complete and no, no recognition that the God that made it, made it for you and I to see it so we would know he's waiting for us to call out to him. You talk about a sign, somebody out there needs a sign that's your sign. Everywhere you look, he's saying, call out to me. Call unto me, and I will answer thee and show thee great and mighty things thou knowest not. Father, I thank you, Lord, that we can call out to you. I thank you for the power in prayer. I pray for blessings upon every person that watches this, bro brothers, sisters, lost, whoever they may be. Bless them, Lord. Let them sense your presence and your power. Let the words of our mouths, the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight. O oh Lord, our strength and our redeemer, in Jesus' name, amen. Please share this.